Welcome back to uh, another episode of Being to Bushcraft and uh, welcome back to the first episode of 2021. Um, today we are, well, see, we just being Brian today. John, John couldn't join us, unfortunately. Um, but I'm heading up to the shelter. Now, I know in a previous video I, I did say that we would not be doing every episode up at the shelter, but unfortunately, due to the, the COVID, travel restrictions and whatnot, it means we can't travel outside our tier zone, so for at the moment we're stuck in the local area and the shelter is only 5-10 minute drive up from where I live, so but today we're going to go up there, and we're not just going to go up there during today, we are staying the night there, we are having our first overnight at the shelter, so that's that'll be good, Brian's a, he's doing a, his first ever Camp cook duty today. Told me he's making a stew. I don't care if it's going to be any good or no. Could be crap. Never tasted his cooking before. I've got an emergency pot noodle with me just in case it's a uh, in case it's not up too much. How hard can it be though? Vegetables and some meat into a pot. Sure he'll manage that, but we'll see. So. Yeah, I'm heading up there now, I'll be there in the next five minutes. Brian's running a wee bit late, I've just spoke to him. So he'll be joining me once I'm up there. It's currently quarter past one in the afternoon now. And the sun is probably already peaked in the sky, it's probably going to start heading down shortly. So I reckon by the time I get up there, I'll have about an hour and a half to two hours of daylight left. So in that time I want to I started building a, a wood store the last time I was there. Didn't get the chance to get that finished. And I also didn't record that. So I want to get that wood store finished off. And we're going to have an absolute ton of firewood to get prepped for tonight. It's currently it's 3 degrees Celsius just now. It's usually 2 or 3 degrees colder once I'm out there because we're, we're out with the town, we're out into the countryside so it, it does get a bit colder out here. I reckon tonight we could go down to minus two, minus three degrees Celsius so it could be a chilly night but if we keep that fire going all night I'm, I'm sure that it will stay nice and warm in the shelter. So yeah, looking forward to this tonight, first night in the shelter, having a few beers as well that's a that always keeps it nice and warm. It doesn't really, but it just gives you that illusion that you're warm because you're you're half cut, shall we say? But, um, yeah, I'm just gonna let's see. We've got another couple of minutes to drive up there, and uh, I'll see you guys once I get back to the shelter. Well, guys, that's me at camp now. Everything's as I left it the other day there. Which is always good to see. Every time I leave here and come back the next day, I'm always worried that when I come back, someone's going to have been here and destroyed it. But um, we're on private land and we're genuinely out in the middle of nowhere here. No dog walkers, no country parks, no roads, no tracks, nothing. So. If anyone ever found this, I would be absolutely astonished. But anyway, I'm sure I talked about it in my last video. If I didn't, I apologise. But I'm going to start this video off with a, a full kit loadout. I'm just going to go through everything that I brought with me today. Brief description of it all. And one of my viewers has a, contacted me and asked me if I could do a review on the, on the Mendel boots that I got. So... We'll give them a quick review and uh, at some point, hopefully in the, in the future, start to understand again, hopefully fairly soon I'm going to get a, a phone call from Brian to tell me that he's on his way, he's going to make his way here as much as he can by vehicle and uh, phone me and I'm going to go and meet him up at his vehicle and we are going to bring a load of kit from his vehicle along here load of heavy kit so 
I'll take the two hours to get it along. So quickly before he phones, I'll get all my kit out, go through everything that I brought with me, and get the Right, guys, I'm just going to run through this as quick as I can because I'm still waiting on Brian to phone me, and I want to get this done. Dusty, do it the way before he phones because I need to head back out the woodland, back out the up on the track. 10 minute walk, go and meet Brian, uh, to get all that kit down here. So, first of all, I'm just going to go through the kit that I carry on me and what I'm wearing. Just a just a t-shirt and I wear a base layer under that at all times, even in the summer. I wear that, I just find I'm really comfortable, you roll the sleeves up if it gets too hot. Uh, on the side of me here, I always carry a little bushcraft knife, which is made by... So Lognac is a hunting company, it's, you don't really see many bushcrafters using them. That came from Decathlon and I have a, went and attached some paracord, a paracord wrap that I done myself. Um, Scandinavian grind with a drop point, holds an edge brilliantly, really good knife actually. And that only cost me, that was less than £20. My only issue with it is it isn't a uh, isn't full tang. However, I've had that for two years now. Never had a problem with it yet. So comes with a little plastic holster, whatever you like to call it. Um, and due to the recent climate, if how things have been, I always carry a just a little. I've got alcohol gel in my pocket. So, what am I doing with my body? My trousers, they are Dunlop work trousers. They are robust, 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 strong. When they're wet, they're really quick drying as well. So, excellent pair of trousers. Again, they were £15 at a sports shop. So, can't complain. You see the prices that some of these bushcrafters and outdoors people pay for a pair of trousers. Um, Fowl Raven, for instance, you could pay up to £175 for a pair of trousers and they do the exact same job as what these do they're uh, reinforced at the knees, they're uh, double layered you can actually insert knee pads into them if you wish um, however I see no need for that um, so, gaiters, I always wear gaiters when I come to this camp as you, as you walk in here it can be, be really boggy um, you actually have to come through a couple of fields and the fields are uh, at this time of year. In fact, today wasn't too bad. It's a uh, really stiffened up with the with the cold temperatures. But in previous weeks, when we had a lot of rain, the ground was saturated, and you were just you were just sinking into it. So always wear my gaiters because you were uh, bogged in up past your ankles. Um, the boots, the Mendels. I don't remember exactly what Mendels these are. If I remember when I'm back in the house editing this, I'm going to try and put it somewhere on the screen, down in a corner somewhere, uh, some of the specifications about the boots and uh, which ones they actually are. However, right, they're Mendel. I had the similar ones to this before. I've had Mendels before. They lasted me 11 years. Yep, they're expensive boots, but 11 years, it, it goes to show it's, it's worth investing in that in a pair of boots, they, they, they last you a long time, 11 years, I think that's, I think that's fantastic amount of time to last a pair of boots. I didn't always look after them, which, well, they could have lasted me longer if I did look after them a bit better. Um, these ones here, they, they've got a MFS system, it's a memory foam system, which is around the ankle. Um, after five minutes of wearing them, the memory foam heats up with your body heat, and actually moulds to the shape of your ankle, which is fantastic. The, the tread on the bottom, absolutely amazing. Now these ones, they, they only come up past my ankle. I don't want high boots. I find them quite restrictive. Um, plus I'm only five foot eight, so I think they just look ridiculous on me. Um, you do you do get other ones that they do come a lot further up your shin. Uh, so for the taller person out there, they, they might be better suited for you. Anyway, moving on. So. I don't know if you seen it when I was walking in there. I had this bag attached onto the the front of me, kind of like a chest rig. It just sat there on my chest. That's that's just food and drink for the night. 
Um, we're here at lunchtime, dinner time tonight, and breakfast for tomorrow. Plus, I've got some beers and whatnot in there, so plenty of food and drink to keep us going. I'm not going to go through the contents of that. I don't think you're going to be interested in what I'm eating. You will see later on what we're having to, to eat and whatnot. Anyway, moving on. Main day sack. I've done a wee bit of, on this in my last video. It is a combat a MTP day sack. It's got the main pouch, two side pouches, one right down at the bottom here, and another one on the front. But I attach to the, I, I always attach things to the outside. I don't like everything on, on the inside, so I keep my gloves. These are the leather gloves made by Superior Glove. They are a Canadian company. I actually got these from a, a friend of mine's uh, who is Canadian. Currently, he's moved over here. He lives here now. So, Peter, if you're watching this, thanks very much for the gloves. I really appreciate it. They've been fantastic so far. Also, on the outside, keep my cooks up. Which is a, anyone watching it, it's a, I think actually, I don't know if they originate from Sweden or Norway, but they are traditional Scandinavian drinking vessels, made wood, hauled out, and uh, they're treated. I've just treated that in olive oil, waterproofs it, protects it, and it's just got a, a little bit of leather just to attach it to the midday sack. So that's, uh, that's what I keep on the front. On the bottom here. I'm just going to re-angle the camera so you can see it better at the bottom. In fact, I'll move the camera closer in. Maybe a second bit. That there is my little folding chair. See the size of it? It's tiny. That there. That, that's a full-size chair when it's all folded out. Great bit of kit. Right, I'm just going to move the camera a bit closer in so you can see a bit better. Just bear with me, please. Right. Right, they, they, this might cut out my face, but you're not here just to look at my face. You're here to see the kit. So, moving on. Also, on the bottom here, I keep strapped on. A kneeling pad, as I've seen me make that, that was a wee gardener one and I put the, the MTP waterproof in fabric on it. So again, really cheap, wasn't any more than £2, better than buying the ones from outdoor shops where you'll, you'll get ripped off. Make your own, cheap as chips. Little, and a little chopping board, so you see I try and keep the flat things on the bottom here. Uh, no reason in particular, it's just, it's just handy. So there, that's just a little plastic flexible chopping board. Again, cost a couple of pounds for a packet of four, believe it or not. Um, this year, I got this for my birthday from my parents. It is a nature hike folding table. I cannot remember if it is stainless steel or titanium. I'm sure the, the, the tabletop itself is titanium and the legs are stainless steel. It is, it's not super lightweight but it's, it's light enough. I don't, I'm not too bothered about super lightweight kit. I'm not a, I'm not one of these guys who tries to shed as much weight as possible um, for going up one rose and whatever. I, I would prefer to carry the weight and be comfortable than uh, have a, a slightly heavier bit of kit. Um, anyway, that, that's a great wee table, I've been, you've seen it in previous videos if you've sort of kept up. So anyway, the bottom pouch on the front. In fact, no, do what? Go through the side pouches first. This side pouch, I haven't mean, actually got that much in it at the moment. I uh, also had my tripod in here, which just watch the cameras might need on to at the moment. So, charging cable for the camera, and a power bank, and also there's usually 
tripod in there as well. So we we'll have that up, leave that in the moment. Other side pouch, it's where I keep all my cutting tools. Mine is the knife which is on me at all times. So I've got a, a Gerber folding saw, you've seen me using that before, so I'm not going to unfold it so you can see that. And my Haltifer's chopping axe, which you've seen before as well. A new bit of kit that I got delivered the other day there is this here, it's a sharpening stone. Not a sharpening stone, it's diamond, it's a diamond sharpening bar made by a company called a Sharpal comes with the paracord handle, sheath and two different grits. The grits on either side is 325 on this side and the 1200 on that, on that side. Now the sheath that it goes in is actually a bit of leather which you can use for stropping as well so that's, that's a great little tool. Very small, lightweight, handy, just to bring it on the camp with you for the sharpening up your tools. I don't know why I've still got this one in here, I could get there get rid of it, just a heavier whetstone for sharpening. Right, back round to this, the bottom pouch on the front here. Some poo paper. Essential. Never ever leave without that. Otherwise you're gonna have a terrible time using the pine needles on your bottom. So I put paper. Didn't bring a big roll yet. Take it off the roll, put it on a, a ziplock bag, keeps it waterproof, small and compact. Now it's sitting in there, just a little bag. I've got my toothpaste and toothbrush and that. Due to the time of year, you get a lot of moisture in there at night time. Even during the day actually, you get a lot of moisture in there. 24 7 at this time of year, so I carry a little lightweight bivy bag just to put over my sleeping bag. That, uh, that keeps my sleeping bag dry rather than it soaking up the moisture during the night. Right, moving on to the next front pouch, which is a bigger front pouch. This here is an old tent sack, in fact tell I, used to be a tarp that was in there. This is where I keep bits of my warm kit, my smaller bits of warm kit. So, my buff, you seen that in a previous video, which I got for Christmas from the wife, thanking you again for that. Woolly hat, now you're sighting, plain black woolly hat. Basically our trousers, put them on at night for when I get into my sleeping bag underneath my leather trousers. Just recently got these, I always suffer from cold feet at night. Doesn't matter how good a sleeping bag I use. Sorry, I just got distracted. There's a wee robin. Every time I come here recently, there's been a wee robin comes to the camp. I'm sure it must be the same one. Just one, every single time. Anyway, thermal socks. They are a the brand heat holders. They are a... A 2.5 tog thermal sock, they're a fleecy on the inside, never used them before so I'm going to trial them, see what they're like tonight, see if my feet can stay a bit warmer. And there's one more thing here, oh yeah just another little pair of socks. My little stainless steel plate, it used to be a frying pan for an old cook kit that I had. As you can see it's been well used and bashed around but I've kept it because it, it makes a great little lightweight robust plate. And my, it's an old uh, pouch, desert pouch. And then here I keep my fire lighting kit. Here yeah, I quick run through what I keep in my fire lighting kit because everyone's is different. First thing that I pull out is a very bushcraft, sorry. Couple of lighters. My preferred method is using a, a fire steel ferrocium rod, but in emergency situations it's always good to have a couple of lighters. Um, a little cheap fire steel there. 
with the striker attached. I do have another fire steel somewhere in my kit. But I think it might even be in the shelter. Um, so I'll get that out and show you if I can find it. And then here I just keep a load of birch bark and cotton wool, which is great for fire lighting. What else in here? A rubbish bag. Always just keep a wee bag folded up, great for putting your rubbish in. Just remember whatever you bring in the woods, you take it back out again. Wee pouch here, and in this pouch I keep my torches, or torch even. Just a, a head torch. So that was only six pound. That great we buy. Had it for years now, and I keep a little little bag here, and I just keep a load of spare batteries and and that. So I think that might be everything in the front pouch. We'll just double check. Oh no, one bear, one bear item of cooking. Right, moving on to the main dump pouch itself. Bear necessity when you come out camping. Wine. Never ever leave home without the wine. Joking. Anyway, another bit of warm kit is a my snug pack fleece thing. Soft fleecy on the inside. That is a, that's the best bit of warm kit I've ever had. I had it for years. I've had it since I was in the army, and I've been out the army now for six years, and it's still going strong. Great bit of warm kit that. Now I wouldn't usually bring all this cooking stuff with me, but we are um, going to try and make a big stew. We've got a big breakfast snack for tomorrow, so I've brought out quite a few bits of cooking kit. So I've not used this one yet. This is the uh, the 16 cent and meat are zebra. Billy tin, which I'm, I've said last time, that's, that's the biggest one that they do in the range. And inside here, I have a wee bottle of oil, washing up liquid, and a little microfiber towel for washing up. That's stored in the little steamer compartment, double as a frying pan, or even a little plate. So that all sits in the top bit. Inside the main part of the billy can I keep a titanium spot and a couple of titanium a little titanium pot and cup and inside the cup I keep all my brew kit. So that's that. And the only thing that's left in here now, which I'm not going to pull out at the moment, is my sleeping bag. So I'm just going to leave that there at the moment and that is everything that I brought in my kit with me today. So now I am going to pack it all away again. Well, I'm not going to pack it all away. I'm going to leave some it out, put it in the shelter at the back of me. I've now got an hour and a half of daylight left. I am going to. What am I going to do? Start prepping firewood because we are going to need a lot of it tonight. It's going to get very, very cold tonight. Like I said earlier on, I'm expecting temperatures up to, well, down to minus three tonight, so I want to get a lot of that kit.